Hey guys, before we get to this video, I just wanted to let you guys know that I will be up in the Tug Hill area and I will be going to the Turn Ridge Riders um, meeting and uh, meet and greet type deal at Whiskey Jacks at four. So uh, the meeting is at nine at the Groomer Barn on Carpenter Road, the Turn Ridge Riders Groomer Barn, obviously. Uh, there's a meeting and then we're gonna go and do trail work. And then after that at four o'clock, we're gonna be at Whiskey Jacks for like a meet and greet. Uh, food, prizes, you could sign up for the club there, everything like that. So I just want to let you guys know, I will be there, Joey will be there, um, Skipper, obviously the president of Turner Riders will be there, but just want to let you guys know that that's where I will be on Saturday. So if you guys can come out and uh, check it out, we will be there, come and have a good time and uh, give us a hand. <music> What's going on guys and welcome back. I am still up here at Southside Sales and Service and we are gonna ding, bring another video to you uh, with what is right behind me. So this is the 2023 Polaris 850 XER. So if you're not familiar with the Polaris lineup, this is the most aggressive setup trail sled possible for the super, super aggressive rider that wants to go out there and beat and bang on all the moguls and go over the tops of them and you know have the best suspension that you could possibly have to do so. So last year in 2022, this was the most sought out model of the entire lineup, I would say. Yeah. Because they finally put the XER in the Matrix chassis. Uh, in 21, they did not. They were still in the Axis chassis. So it was a very big, big and super popular model. So this year, um, it's not as popular because the VR1 boost and the Assault boost came through the door mm -hmm. and that really caught everyone's attention, but they are still pushing these XCRs out. So there isn't much to update on these. Um, pretty much, you know, again, if you want to have the most aggressive sled, you got to have the best suspension. So these have the best shock package that you could get from Polaris, um, which I, well, Bruce talk about here in a second, you know, a little bit of the differences and what, what makes these shocks better than say what was on this vr1 that's to the left of us that actually doesn't have shocks on it <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, rebuilt. yeah there uh, there's nothing there so yeah, as we talked about last year these are the uh high speed outside knob high speed inside knob low speed so it separates the movement of that clicker like on on these shocks it has one knob you go all the way in and it's stiff you come all the way out it's soft and everywhere in between um, this is nice when it splits that because you can turn that red knob for high speed and not really make it harsh and a little stuttery stuff. Whereas, you know, years past on the walkers, it had the round knob on the top here that you turned down. You know, you'd get in, you know, you had 18 clicks, you got in nine and it was like hard. I mm -hmm. mean, like hydraulic hard. So this is much more progressive, much nicer for that. Mm -hmm. Now and for the people... People that may not have seen videos last year, what is really the difference between high speed and low speed? Okay, so I mean, that, we understand it, but let's you know bring it down to yeah. That red nav high speed is is the fast or a lot of movement of the shock where it's going through its travel and it's moving very fast because as that shock goes fast, the valves are like leaf springs in there, and the faster that rod is going, the more those leaf springs are bending. So it's it's um, affecting all of the valves. Well, inside here, you have another set of valves. So when you're threading that in, you're stiffening that area also, with, but without affecting the, what they call like a, a bypass hole. So a bypass hole is what makes it so that this thing still, it moves with just easy movement like that. Um, when, you, when you're turning this, it doesn't affect that. This knob then closes off another hole, which then affects that movement right so um and that little stuff that that little stuff like this is all the stuff that you're going down and there's all those little things that you're hitting which you constantly are and you and you but you don't feel it back in the handlebars so that's that low speed or small movement of the shock yeah so and that is all the way around and that's the same deal right um and these are a bigger body and shaft also yeah these are 5.8 shaft which vr ones are 5.8 shaft also mm -hmm. um, but it is a bigger body it's two inch body all the way around so right so the the body is two inch all the way around on these on an assault it's two inch in the front and in the front track and then inch and three quarter in the rear 
and um, on VR1, it's inch and three quarter here and here, two inch in the front center, center yeah. drive. Right, so two inch all the way around, um, just reasons for that flow. Well, the more oil you got, the better it is. I mean, it's you, one, the oil gets beat up and it gets, and the shocks are always moving. They're always moving in and out. They might only be moving an inch, they might be moving four inches, but they're always moving. So the more oil you have that's going through the orifices and changing all that, you are, um, one, it gets very hot, and two, it beats up on the oil. So the more oil you have, the better. It's no different than a race car compared to, you know, a passenger car's got five or six quarts in it. A race car will have 10 or 15 quarts in it because that there's much more oil so it can handle um, all that heavy usage. Mm -hmm. And the larger piston, so there's more area for oil going through, there's more ability to change that valving and make it stiffer because there's just, there's more area that you can cover to make things. <laughs> there's more surface more area to do stuff. Yep. More room for activities. Yep. Mm -hmm. So yes, this is uh, Polaris's, you know, really ultimate trail weapon is right here. And this is what I had last year. This looks like a 128. Yep. Mine was a 137, mm -hmm. or sorry, 136. Um, so this is a little shorty. Bruce has this in, in 650 form. Yeah. That's what he ran last year, and that's what he's going to be running this year. Um, so they came in 128s, 136s. The reason that sounds weird, you're normally probably used to hearing 129s and 137s. That is because the pitch of this track is different. The drivers have a different pitch. This is that 252 pitch as opposed to 286. Pitch. Right, so it's a little bit closer. closer little bit, yeah, a little bit closer. So there's actually more, more sl window slots to put studs in. Yeah. Um, you know, more more contact patch or say not more contact patch but more lugs hitting the ground at once yeah. um is so better traction is kind of what they look for there um these comes with their xcrs come with 100 pound springs in the front and this year finally yeah. we, spring. we got what we wanted we got heavy duty springs in the rear that came factory um last year we felt that they 110 percent needed the heavy duty springs in the rear and uh, for 2023, they came through and gave us what we wanted. Um, whether our voices were heard or not, <laughs> we're going to chalk it up. I think everybody's voices were heard. Yeah. <laughs> so as for valving in these, we are like 99% sure they are identical. Identical to, last year. Yep. Mm -hmm. So okay. So we're 100% sure they are identical to last year. Um, so they're still going to be soft when it comes to the guy that's aggressive. Yes. The spring will still hold the sled up, but the anti-bottoming fact didn't change right and if you guys want to get into that i mean we did a ton my sled was came apart you know multiple times getting it where we wanted it to be or where we felt that it should be yeah um and then we got it to work really really well bruce is um the mastermind behind all of that so if you guys are interested in that you could reach out to me you could reach out just to the shop ask for bruce and you know he'll walk you through that but that's not what we're here for so this color combo is actually really cool i didn't love it in pictures online, but I really love it in person. Yeah. It's mostly black. They switched up a couple things, and I didn't even realize it. The Polaris is now here. Right. And the XCR is there where the Polaris used to be there. So a um, yeah. little change in graphics. Yeah, this one here with that uh, matte black. Yeah, matte black. Matte it nice. does look really, really good. Mm -hmm. And I love the red does pop through this. But it came in, I believe, two other color options. I believe the teal and the white. Yeah, and, we have a teal and the white on the floor. And then a red and a white. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That red was nice, too. Red was nice. Uh, track options for the XERs are 135s and 16s, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So this one is a 135. It seems to be the most popular. I mean, you see them all the time. Definitely the most popular. That track, that Cobra 1.35 has been around for a long time. It's just a great track. Yeah. Yeah. So in your XCR, you have different handlebars than your VR1. Um, these are pro taper bars. Yeah, full uh, hook on this side, yeah. not just an angle. Yeah, full hook on that side. Um, I, they might be a little bit different bend. Um, they used to come with a taller riser, and I believe they're now down to the standard riser that come on a VR1. Yep, they are. So you have that. Um, as for XCR that separates it from a VR1, um, I think you have a different front torque arm i believe it's like a chromoly front torque yeah. arm yeah and the um the carrier in the center is heavier duty mm -hmm. where the front track shock goes down right and then obviously the uh what we've talked about before is rear rear scissor stop blocks are Billy. all aluminum 
and then they have a connector in between. So when, because when this comes in contact with this, is you know it's a harsh area. Uh, they connect it together so you don't bend the um, outside of the rails there, you know, because again, this is made for more aggressive riders. Right, and the rails are a little bit different on a lot less holes. yes, a lot less holes, so sturdier, a little bit heavier, but sturdier. And on the 137 or 136 models, I'm sorry, the last couple inches of them, just like on the assaults, so are just tipped up just the slightest bit, uh, trying to get you know with the handle similar to 128 but still have that traction of a 136. Um, inside the hood is exactly the same. Nothing's changed there. Uh, you still have the P85 clutch. We do not have the P22 on this yet. So you still have a deflection bolt. Yeah, there's that air box we were looking for. Oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, I know this year here, I think we definitely want to try uh, one of those clutches on a natural. Yeah, to, yeah, we were. That was on the list of things to do last year, and we never got around to it. Yeah. Um. So definitely be interested to see what they, how they act on that. I'm sure, just with that deflection bolt, I'm sure is is huge. Without yeah. without the deflection bolt, I should yeah, say. Yeah. When we talked about it earlier, the um, the belt being basically tight tighter than you would ever get it before because you have that bearing down inside. Mm -hmm. So it'd be interesting to see with a uh, with a naturally aspirated naturally aspirated sled how it's going to be. Yeah. Be super interested in i know a lot of people were a little upset that the 9r only came in the the uh mountain models this year and a lot of guys have been asking me if a 9r will be in an xcr next year and that's a big question mark we have no idea um yeah. we would like to see it i think it'd be pretty cool i haven't ridden a not you didn't get to get on a 9r right nope, they weren't even there yeah weren't even there so uh super interested to see you know kind of what a big bore of one of these bad boys with a light lightweight rotating rotating assembly would be but Unfortunately, we're going to have to probably wait on that one, I guess. Mm -hmm. yep. But that is what you have, guys. 2023 Polaris XCR. Um, if you guys want to go and ditch bang and beat on giant moguls and tug hill, this is your machine. But uh, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.